today is April 10th, and by special request, it's the English only article. That's right. So today, your article will be in 100% English, and I know you're going to do a great job.、Mm. Let's look at our title today Isa Isinger's Planetarium and Amateur's Mark on History. Yeah, that sounds super fun. We have some big words in here, but that sounds super fun.、Mm. Yeah, you're exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> This is a tough title for the、mm. English only article. Let's take a look at Planetarium. Okay. This is a building with a round roof and it has the sky painted on it. So you can learn about stars and planets and outer space. An amateur is a person. That works like they're not professionals. They didn't go to school to st- study something. Sometimes it also means someone that isn't really good.、Mm-hmm. But in this story, this amateur is, man, he's awesome.、Mm-hmm. And your mark on history is something we remember you for in the future. So we might think of like Picasso's famous paintings.、Mm-hmm. Picasso did a lot of things in his life, but his mark on history was his art. Right. So today we're apparently going to talk about a person and his legacy. That's right. His beautiful,、mm. interesting planetarium in the sky. Let's look at our subtitle Learn about the story behind this amazing planetarium.、Mm. All right. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we got paragraph one. Isa Isinga Planetarium. An amateur's mark on history. Nearly 250 years ago, in 1774, scientists predicted that some planets and the moon would appear in the same part of the sky on a night in May. A Dutch preacher claimed that the rare event would lead to the destruction of the earth. Naturally, this end of the world prediction. Caused panic among people. Luckily, a 30 year old wool comber living in the town of f r a n e k e was there to put everyone at ease. Isa Isinga, who had spent most of his life engaging in the production of wool, was an amateur lover of mathematics and astronomy. He had studied these subjects as a youth. Even though he couldn't attend school. Through self education, he was able to continue his studies as he got older. To prove that there was no reason for panic, Isinga decided to build a scale model of the solar system. However, it took him seven years, from 1774 to 1781. To build the model into the ceiling of his house. Impressed by his work, William I, King of the Netherlands, bought the house and made it a royal planetarium. More than 200 years later, the Isa Isinga Planetarium still works, making it the oldest functional planetarium in the world. In 2023, It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which ensures its proper protection and the continuation of its educational value in the future. All right, friends, let's start paragraph one of our English only article. I'll try to speak slower today. And don't be afraid to stop and listen again to help you understand. Get your highlighters and your pens to take lots of notes. Our first sentence says Nearly 250 years ago, in 1774, scientists predicted that some planets and the moon would appear in the same part of the sky on a night in May. Yeah, I think that happens in a lot of cultures, right? In the past, people kind of like they observed something and they say something bad's going to happen, right? Yeah, so people want to know the future. We、mm. want to know if something bad is coming so we can prepare. And we, people in history, look for meanings in many places. Chinese culture, you have the、yeah. bird, look in the bird guts. 
everybody kind of looks at the stars. If you can guess when something will happen, then maybe you know other things in the future. And so we people in history really love to guess、mm. about things in the sky. Right. And they can't go there, so like you have to guess, right?、Mm, right. And speaking about speaking of guess, we also have the word here, predict. That's right. right. So、Good. predict means basically you say something's going to happen in the future, but you don't know for certain. You're just predicting. You you literally are saying the Latin word here, pre p r e means before, and dict is like dictionary, d i c t.、Oh, okay. So a dictionary tells you what words mean. So you say. Uh, you say what will happen before it happens. You、mm. predict it. Let's go to our next sentence. A Dutch preacher claimed that the rare event would lead to the destruction of the earth. <gasps> dun,、<Yeah> . dun, dun. <laughs> Sounds pretty terrible, but that also happens a lot in history. And who is a preacher? So a preacher is like a religious leader.、Mm -hmm. they, they don't always lead a church, but they like to talk about religious things. Maybe it's Christian, maybe it's Buddhist, but they always talk about religion. That's their job. And I think in the past they were also more knowledgeable, right? Compare with other people, the public. That's right. Yeah. So they are saying things, predicting things.、Yeah. These were people in the past. Most people couldn't read, but、mm. preachers generally、yeah. needed to read because they had to read the Bible. Bibles, the Christian book, was only in Latin, so you had to take Latin classes. And they also usually went to school for math and some other things. They had much more education than other people.、Um, they understood math, they understood languages, and they could read. Most people, you just had to listen to them. You had to trust what they were saying. So this guy thought not not just that the planets would like line up in the same place.、Mm -hmm. They thought like this preacher thought that all the planets are in like one circle around、yeah. the Earth, and so they would all meet. And just like boom, 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 like you're、right. playing pool or something. Yeah, they didn't know all the planets. They were actually quite far from each other. Well, this dummy、mm. didn't. People <laughs> definitely knew there were rings around space.、Uh -huh. Like that was Galileo's whole bag, right?、Uh, okay. So、uh, there were a lot of scientists that、uh -huh. understood it, but this guy was popular for some reason, and he was like, <laughs> a, he was like the <laughs> loudest dummy around, and so everybody, <laughs> everyone's like, oh my god! And、uh, yeah, so everybody listened to this loud guy that、mm -hmm. didn't know what he's talking about. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Naturally, this end of the world prediction. Oh, there's our noun、mm -hmm. from sentence one. Prediction caused panic among people.、Mm, panic sort of means like you're nervous about something. Yeah, you're kind of you know freaked about freaked out about something. And here we have end of the world. Here it used as an adjective. So basically, it you know you put it together with a hyphen in between to make it an adjective. There are a lot of words in English, a lot of ways to talk about the end of the world because,、mm -hmm. like, people like to think about it. For a lot of Christians, talking about the end of the world was a good thing.、Mm -hmm. Jesus would come back at the end of the world and save everybody. Like we we think a lot of people think when you die、mm -hmm. in Christian faith, you go right to heaven. That's not true. In the Bible, you die and then you wait for Jesus to come back and then Jesus takes you to heaven. So、oh, okay. Christians for a long time really wanted the end of the world because Jesus was saving everybody. Oh, really? That's, That's right.、Real. Yeah. That's right. So people misunderstand the real historical、oh, okay. reason why everybody was so excited for the end of the world. Like, yeah, we'll all die, but when the end of the world happens and everyone dies, then Jesus comes and everyone can go to heaven. Right now, everyone's just waiting. <laughs> So it's a little bit like salvation back in the past, like you were saved, redeemed in some sort of way. Yeah, people、uh -huh. wanted the end of the world. They were like, "Oh, sweet, the end of the world is coming." Now, some people, if they weren't sure, is heaven real?、Mm -hmm. Is heaven not real? They're not excited for the end of the world. But this preacher、mm -hmm. preaches about religion. This person is excited for the end of the world.、Oh, like,、okay. yo, everybody, this is going to be great. <laughs> So listen out. He's kind of like excited about the whole、That's、thing. That's、right. he's, he's he's ready to have a party. <laughs> he's ready. Let, let let's go, everybody. So panic is uncontrolled fear, just like Betty. So you're not thinking. You're、mm -hmm. afraid, and you're not thinking.、Mm -hmm. So you're making bad choices.、Mm. Let's continue to our next sentence. Luckily, a thirty-year-old wool comber living in the town of Franeca. Was there to put everyone at ease? 
Right. So this is actually quite fun wool combing. Or what kind of job is that? Okay. So a wool. So everybody has. Mm. We all know what wool is. It's the fur from a sheep, and it's very curly. And sheep are kind of dirty,、mm -hmm. and so lots of things get in their fur. A wool comber's job was to comb the wool and clean it out and make it straight, so you can make it into yarn or string, so、mm. you can make it into clothes. This guy just combed yarn all day. So that means probably he was in probably people normally would wouldn't think that he would you know be able to create a planetarium, right? That's right. This、mm. is our unlikely hero. Here's a guy、mm. combing wool all day, and he's like this preacher, this educated man、mm -hmm. that knows science and Latin and can read and went to college probably. I, he's wrong.、Mm. And who are you, right? So everybody wants to know who this big loudmouth is, telling everyone that the preacher is wrong. Now we saw panic in the last sentence. Now we have at ease.、Mm. At ease is the opposite of panic. Mm, and we you, we often say put somebody at ease.、Mm, use it with put the verb. That's right. Put somebody at ease to be relaxed. All right. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to start paragraph two. In paragraph one, we talked about a preacher, a religious talker, that said the end of the world is coming. Now, usually we think that's bad. This dude is like, oh, this is sweet. <laughs> But we have a wool comber, and that says, "No, this guy's not right." Let's learn more about him.、Mm -hmm. Our first sentence begins: Isa Isinger, who had spent most of his life engaging in the production of wool, was an amateur lover of mathematics and astronomy. Right. So this sentence, we get a little bit more information about this person, and here we have this. Had spent, and also,、um, yeah, we have the past perfect tense.、Mm. Yeah, and why is it used in past perfect instead of past simple? That's because it's showing. Okay, you get the background information. So this is about the background information, and it happens before the event we're talking about. So we're using, we're stating the sentence, writing the sentence in past perfect. So、uh, Isa Isinger. Was what we call an autodidactic. This is a very fancy word. Don't worry about this too much. Autodidactic are people that can learn by themselves.、Uh, everybody can learn a little bit by themselves,、mm. like just by doing things. But this is a person that really loved to learn things. He was really special, and、mm -hmm. he wasn't a nobody. Yeah, he's a wool comber, but he was also really smart. But、mm. the problem was, he was a wool comber. That means his dad was poor. He could not go to school. He could not pay for teachers.、Mm. He was extremely good at math and science, and、uh, unfortunately, because he did not have money, he couldn't go to university or college. But、mm. he loved learning, and he would just do it himself. I remember it says he quit school at the age of twelve. Yeah. So basically,、uh. most most people didn't go to school longer than like twelve、mm. years old. That, that's a pretty normal age. If, if anything. For him, twelve years old is pretty far. Like、mm. first grade, second grade would be the most education,、mm. like a farmer's boy would have.、Mm, right. And here we have this word engaging in something. That means getting involved in something. Or sometimes when we use engage,、um, engaging or engaged in in its adjective form, if something is engaging, that means it's interesting. It draws you in. If you get engaged in a class, that means you get involved. You Concentrate on your lesson in class,、mm. and if you engage a person, that means you want to marry them. So、mm. we are engaged. That means these two people want to get married.、Mm. We saw this word amateur in our title. Remember, amateur means this person is not a professional, or it also means this person is without skill. But、mm. we know this guy is really smart. This is the prof not a professional meaning,、mm -hmm. not. They don't have skill. Let's continue. He had studied these subjects as a youth, even though he couldn't attend school. Yeah, so youth here just means a young guy, <laughs> basically. Youth. <laughs> Sometimes we use it in more of an abstract sense. That means youth, right? Eternal youth. Some people they seek eternal youth. Perhaps Peter Pan. <laughs> Some people, fictional characters.、Mm. Yeah, you. So. There's also something when people first went to North America,、mm. they thought they could find the fountain of youth, 
and the fountain of youth was like a fountain is where you can get some water mm. from at like at a park right your dog park or whatever that's a fountain the fountain of youth would has magical water that makes you young forever and people really thought it was in florida in the united states they're like dude it's florida it's not florida <laughs> 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 all right let's continue to our next sentence through self-education, he was able to continue his studies as he got older. Right. So basically, he teach himself and he was able to learn very well. And here, continue his studies. We don't say continue his study. We say studies in plural. Mm. That's right. That's a great point. Highlight that so we don't forget it. What, have you ever taught yourself something like you just really wanted to learn it? Not really. Not really. You mm. like like traditional. I like going to school so that they teach me all the tips and tricks. This mm. is a good point because I really enjoy learning a lot of things myself. I grew up poor, a little bit like him. We didn't have money for teachers, but I wanted to learn guitar. I wanted to learn Chinese. I wanted to do all these things. But I will say I can learn all these things, but I could never become an expert because I didn't have a knowledgeable teacher oh. to help me grow and, and become. But that's fine because I love learning lots of little things, right? Yeah, so that, so I some think people that's good. Are like this. Yeah, that's good because you get extensive knowledge about things and kind of, you know, be able to chat with people very well. Well, this in English, this is called a mile wide and an inch deep. It's a little bit rude, actually. We it's also like, have I know, that expression in Chinese. Yeah, I'm very much <laughs> that. <laughs> Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we got paragraph three. friends, welcome back to Enjoy English School. We're on pages 26 and 27. We're learning about Isa Isinger's planetarium. And in paragraph three, we'll actually learn about the planetarium now. And it's really, really special. This is our English only article. So don't forget to listen again if you need it. Paragraph three begins to prove that there was no reason for panic Isinger decided to build a scale model of the solar system. I think here you can see kind of he was determined to do that. You don't really go to great lengths just to prove someone was wrong. <laughs> yeah, like unless you're like a crazy person, like you, you like give your whole life to proving this right. teacher wrong. <laughs> this was a guy that really loved studying the sky, mm -hmm. astronomy. When we prove something, we show people with evidence. And take a look. There was no reason. No mm. reason is negative. But look at the B verb. It's positive. Pick up your blue pen. Was. Write a plus. No. Write a negative. Don't say wasn't. No reason. That's wrong. When we build a scale model, that means this is a copy of a thing. It's usually bigger, or mm -hmm. excuse me, usually smaller mm -hmm. than the real thing, but sometimes they're bigger. In science class, you might build a scale model of like a germ or a mm. cell, right? Yeah. And it's often in proportion, yeah. right? So it's almost, it's like the same. If you keep growing it, it will be correct size. Mm. Usually that's what it means. Let's continue the solar system. That's our star, the sun, and all the planets. That's called the solar system. Let's continue. However, it took him seven years from 1774 to 1781 to build the model into the ceiling of his house. Oh, sure. Mm. That Actually, I feel that it's quite impressive because only seven years back in the time when you don't, you didn't really have a lot of modern conveniences. It only took him seven years. So I, I want you to think about someone building something in your house for seven years. This was not a rich man. He didn't have a big mm -hmm. house. So while he was building his planetarium, his wife, and six children lived in the kitchen. Mm. They couldn't use the house because crazy dad is building a planetarium for seven years. Yeah, in the living room, right? In the living mm. room. Like, dad, what are you doing? I'm building a planetarium. Can I sleep in the living room? No. <laughs> right, so that sounds, yeah, that, that's a bit funny if you, you know, look at it now. That's yeah. crazy. So he had to make 10,000 nails. He made his own nails he mm. had to make 10,000 of them. This, this man loved this topic. Mm. Oh, this is a crazy person. All right. Impressed by his work, William I, King of the Netherlands, bought the house and made it a royal planetarium. 
Right. So actually, his work was admired at that time, unlike many artists, right? Back then, probably they weren't, their paintings, their artworks weren't that famous when they were alive. But this, this guy is different because the king bought his house. Right? That's right. So when something is royal, the mm -hmm. royal planetarium, that means the quality is good enough for a king mm -hmm. or a queen. Um, the biggest bed you can buy is called a royal bed, like king size bed, mm. royal king. It's a huge bed, like 10 people can sleep on it. Look at William, and then we have one. You have like, it looks like the letter I. We read this William the first. You don't mm. see the, you have to say it. Please write the. What about the word impressed? Here we know it's, you know, it's in past participle because that means William, um, William the first was impressed by his work. So we use past participle. But what about this word, the definition of it? Okay, ready? Mean. Wow! That's what impressed means. People saw it and they're like, wow! Mm. That's impressed. They really thought this was special. So the king saw this and thought this is pretty cool, so let me buy the house. And Isa Isinger didn't tell the king no, but he did say, you can buy my house, but I still get to live here. <laughs> Why? Because he wanted to keep teaching people about his planetarium. I love this guy's mm. energy for the topic. And commitment. He loves talking mm. about his planetarium. He really loves it. Right. You can imagine because he spent seven years building it. So, of course, he's going to have that sort of like attachment to his own work. It's his baby, mm. right? I think his kids were seven years older by the time he finished. I don't mm. know how old his army of children were. But I do know they grow a lot in seven years. And so some <laughs> left the house and got families and jobs. They still, and, or some of them still lived in the kitchen. And they're all growing up now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's continue. More than 200 years later, the Isa Isinger Planetarium still works, making it the oldest functional planetarium in the world. That's super amazing because functional, that means it's still working. Can you imagine something that was built like 200, 250 years ago? It's still working today. That's right. And mm. there are a lot of really interesting facts about the planetarium. Mm. Let's share a few really quickly. So the thing the the planetarium is one, one trillionth scale. One trillion means mm. one trillion. I can't tell you the Chinese but it means one plus 12 zeros. And then we add a because it's like the, the ordinal number. One, one trillionth scale. That means one millimeter is one million kilometers in the scale model. It's crazy. And you also have to do the math while you work on it, right? That's yeah. right. He Remember, he was really good at math and he was really good at astronomy. He wanted this to be correct to show the preacher that all the planets were not going to hit mm. each other. They were in their own rings. Mm. Now, what are some of the planets we'll see? Well, we see the sun. We see Mercury and Venus. That's one and two. We see Earth, mm -hmm. Mars. That's the red planet. Mm -hmm. Then we see Jupiter. That's mm. the wood star mm -hmm. in Chinese, the biggest one. And then we see Saturn. They have the rings, mm. but right. no other planets. Because they wasn't discovered at that time. They had not been discovered mm. that. So you can only see to Saturn. They also, joked, they also joked about it. Like if they had found other planets by the time he was working on it, he would run out of space in his living room. I, that's exactly yeah. what I thought. I, I did not personally read this, but if if there were more planets, where would where would he put Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto? Right. Where would they go? His house would oh. either have to be bigger or the scale would be smaller and you mm. couldn't see anything. Yeah. Crazy. All right. Let's continue here. Uh, in 2023, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which ensures its proper protection and the continuation of its educational value in the future. Mm, it's definitely somewhere I would like to visit if I go to the ne if I go to Netherlands because that sounds pretty fun. It's like a small house. It's not big. And it when looks you, nice too, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks cozy. And when you enter, you will see like the ceiling. It's I think it's in green, in blue. I think I think so. Is I it? think so. Yeah, they yeah. didn't do like a night sky. I'm not really sure about that. Oh. Uh, but yeah, you can go and it looks beautiful. Mm. A heritage site means a this place has a special historical value. Mm. And when we ensure, that means we make sure for the future. So 
hopefully people will get to enjoy the working functional planetarium for many, many more years to come. So that was our Enjoy English, English only article. Tell us what you think. Give us some comments. What can we do better? I'm always happy to read them. For Enjoy English School, I'm Chris Gorski. I'm Betty. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.